gonna do a fun lesson today on balloon rockets. Uh, this is a great activity to do with the whole family. It's fun as a competition. Uh, you can award prizes to each other. So even if you don't have all of the materials today um, and you make a trip to Target or Walmart or something this weekend, it would be a fun one to do with the whole family, especially if you have a rainy weekend approaching. So my name is Emily. Thanks for joining the Need Project's Instagram Live Lessons. Um, this is, I don't know what number in our series of, of live lessons, but this one will be recorded and put on YouTube for you after the lesson. Uh, so if you, again, like I said, don't have the materials, we'll post a link to the video so that you can do a little refresher later this weekend and um, or later this week and do the activity or repeat the activity with family. So uh, you're gonna need a few materials for this one, but it's very, very simple. And a lot of the materials are things that you could um, even sort of make on your own if you don't have some of the items that, that we would need to make balloon rocket. Um, obviously, if we're making balloon rockets today, you're gonna need one key item, balloons. Um, I'm very on brand today with my blue balloons. I have blue, lots of different colors. The hardest part I think of this activity is going to be blowing up the balloons. Um, so you might need an adult or a hot um, winded person um, to help you with that. You're gonna need some string or some thread and lots of different versions of those items will work. Uh, I have some thread from my sewing kit. Uh, this is heavy duty thread. You can use whatever. This is a little thicker of thread so it's really durable which helps because it, it's not gonna snap if you stretch it long but if you have regular string regular thread that's great uh, i also have some blue yarn here courtesy of my pal wendy in the office that i have not given back to her so thanks wendy um this is just blue um knitting yarn so that would work too um make sure you check with whomever sewing supplies you are stealing for this activity aside from balloons and straw or uh, balloons and string you're going to need some scissors you're gonna need some tape. I like to use masking tape for this activity. You can use painter's tape. You could use packing tape. You could use whatever you have. Um, scotch tape doesn't stick as well on the plastic balloons uh, or the rubber balloons, so I like to use masking tape. Um, and I have pre-cut some strips that I have on my table so that it's easy to grab because I'm doing this activity by myself today. So this is an activity that is really fun to do with a friend or family member. If you have somebody else at home to work on this activity with you, it does help to have an extra set of hands, but I'm gonna show you a fun little uh, cheat that I have that you might be able to do in your house if you are by yourself. The last little piece um, that you're gonna need besides balloons, string, scissors, and tape is a straw. If you don't have a plastic disposable straw like this one from Chick-fil-A, someone in my house went to Chick-fil-A without me and so I stole their straw. Still mad about that. Um, I have a plastic straw here. I also have some paper straws left over from some event sometime and those would work well. If you do not have a straw, it is very, very easy to make your own straw. So. All you do if you need to make your own straw, hi everybody who's joining us, hi Kara. Um, I just used some scrap paper. This is paper I had cut up from something else I had done for a different activity. So this is scrap from the recycle bin. And you literally are going to cut a piece of this paper and roll it up tightly to make a straw yourself. Um, so if, like I said, if you do not have your own plastic, disposable paper, whatever kind of straw, and all you have maybe are stainless steel straws or rubber straws that you reuse, um, you can make your own disposable straw out of paper um, and just use some scrap paper. So um, like I said, those are our materials today. We're gonna make balloon rockets. Very, very simple to do, very, very fun. Um, you can challenge yourself with this activity and do this over large amounts of space. You can do this outside, you can do this inside. So it's a very fun activity to involve as many people as you are socially allowed to be around at the time. So hi everybody, it seems like we have a good number of people here with us. Um, I see John is here, I see Kara is here, Princess Awesome is here. Hi everybody, hi Yvonne. Thanks for joining us. Does anybody have any uh, questions about the materials that we're gonna need? 
I am gonna pin Kimberly's comment. Kimberly works with me at the office there. She has, she'll be moderating today. If you have any questions and I miss them, hopefully Kimberly can ask, uh, answer them in the comments. I've pinned her comment at the bottom there um, that describes what materials you need. So if you have any questions as we go today, feel free to ask those. This is a fun, quick activity. I may ask you some questions, um, so feel free to follow along. If you're doing your own, do that at your own pace, but I may, I'll show you and I'll demonstrate how to make these balloon rockets, and I might need some help because I'm by myself today. So follow along and answer questions or ask questions in the, the comments. And if it looks like I'm trying to trip on something here, I have pre-tied my string onto my railing over here. And I have my railing, and you might not be able to see it, but since I'm working by myself, I've tied the string, because I'm gonna need this string in a long line today, on my railing. So since I'm by myself, that's gonna help me a little bit today. So bear with me as we do that. Um, so let's rotate around here a little bit. And really quickly, since need is all about energy, I wanna just really quickly go over how a rocket deals with energy. So when we're talking about rockets, any kind of rocket, like a SpaceX rocket or NASA, if you've ever been outside and watched a rocket launch, this is my paper rocket. See, it's a SpaceX here. I made this this morning. Very crafty, as you can tell. Um, whenever you have a rocket, a rocket that is launched into space, for example, um, to carry things to the International Space Station or to put a satellite into orbit. Um, a rocket is really simply using a common principle that you would learn about in school called Newton's Law. And we're going to look specifically at Newton's Third Law when we're talking about rockets. So Newton's Third Law says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And that is the whole reason that a rocket works. When we're talking about rocks, rockets, they're basically what we call a reaction engine. And so what happens is they're gonna push some mass, and in the case of a rocket, it's fuel that we've exploded. We're gonna push that mass out of the bottom of the rocket, and we're going to hope that the force that we push that item out, there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction by law, by Newton's law, that's going to react and push this puppy right up into space. Or if you are already in space and you need to, like they do in uh, Apollo 13 for all of my adults, they're gonna explode a little fuel and thrust it forwards because as the fuel pushes out, the engine in the back, it's going to react and push it forward, okay? That same principle is what's gonna make a balloon work for us. And instead of exploding fuel, we're gonna use hot air from our mouths, okay? So our rocket's a balloon, it's going to work the exact same way. The air in the balloon is gonna be our mass instead of rocket fuel, so bear with me here. I put a little bit of air in my balloon and I am going to uh, really just let that air out. What happens is, just like a rocket, that air is going to come out. And in the case of a rocket, maybe it's if we're uh, launching it from the ground, maybe that fuel is going to propel out the bottom and our rocket's gonna blast off. And because that air pushes out the bottom, the rocket reacts and move, moves forward. In our activity today, we're gonna to launch our rockets horizontally. So the same process is gonna happen. We're just gonna, instead of having our mass push vertically, we're gonna have our mass and our balloon react horizontally, okay? So um, when we're inflating a balloon, where does the energy come in? And why is energy related? So when we inflate a balloon, a balloon is made of a rubber, um, often called latex. So if anybody in your house has a latex allergy, check with them first because sometimes this can be pretty hard on their skin, okay? So if we inflate the balloon, we're putting compressed air into this balloon, okay? And as we put that air compressed inside the balloon, the balloon's rubber material is going to stretch out. And it's going to, as long as we hold it tight, okay? As long as we hold it tight, that elastic potential energy, because it's stretching, we applied a force by putting air in, that elastic 
energy that's stretching the balloon is going to push back on the side of the balloon. So the air is pushing on the balloon and the balloon is pushing back on the air. Action and reaction, just like in the rocket. And as long as this balloon is closed, the pressure is balanced. So the forces from the action and the reaction are balanced. The second we open up that balloon and let the air out, this is the, um, the air is gonna push out and the um, balloon is gonna push, help to push it out to balance that force. And it's gonna rocket or propel your balloon in a certain direction. I was holding on to mine, you can let it go. Um, but it's gonna propel that balloon until the force equals out again and that balloon is mostly empty, okay? So that elastic potential energy is going to transform and push the air back out. And that action and reaction is what's gonna launch our balloon forward, okay? So our balloon's stored energy is what's really gonna propel this rocket forward. As you could imagine, the more stored energy you put into your balloon by, the, by blowing up into it more, hopefully, the farther and faster it's gonna go. That's what we'll see, okay? So with this activity, really, really simple, and we're gonna start small. We're going to use a piece of a straw. I'm gonna start with my plastic straw, and you're gonna to need to cut this, the straw down. One of the things that you can easily do, and this is really just an engineering design challenge today, you can alter the size of your straw at any time if you need to. You can also alter the size of your balloon by putting more or less air into it. Another thing you can do is use various sizes of balloons for this activity. If you have a one of those like ventriloquist balloons that's really long and skinny, that might react and act differently than a regular sort of oblong balloon like I have here. So you can trade out types of balloons, you can trade out types of straws, you can trade out types of string to see how the balloon rockets forward. Now. The reason we're using string is because as you probably saw, I just launched two balloons and they went wherever they went in my house. Um, hopefully my cats aren't eating them. But we're gonna use a string and a straw to help provide a straightforward path for our rocket so that we can use less balloons and watch its motion and kind of see how that action and reaction force works together with that potential energy release, okay? so. I am going to do the balloon last, but first thing I'm gonna do is cut up a piece of straw. I'm gonna use probably about an inch to an inch and a half of straw. I would say, aside from um, blowing up the balloon, the other difficult part of this activity is getting the string through the straw. <laughs> and depending on how wide or thick your straw is, it will be easier or harder. So what you're gonna do is, and this again is where it's handy to have probably more than one person or more than one set of hands if you're able to in your house. You're gonna string that piece of straw onto your string, okay? And you're going to have one person hold the string at the end, like I have here, and another person hold it at the other end. If you don't have extra sets of hands, you can do like I did and tie it onto a chair and tie it onto a railing, but you're gonna wanna leave one end untied to something so that you can move the straw on and off, attach the balloon, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So next thing we need to do is add our rocket. And in the rocket world, in the SpaceX world, the fuel is what they call in a rocket stage. So we're gonna blow up our balloon. And I'm not gonna go too big first, okay? Now, the first thing that you're going to think about is how you're gonna attach your balloon to the straw. And the easiest thing to sometimes do is use the, um, the straw on the top and tape the balloon across. Okay, so bear with me here. I'm gonna kind of go off screen and get my tape. Okay. And bring my, slide my straw back here. And I'm gonna tape, sometimes depending on your balloon, depending on how sticky your tape is, depending on how your straw is, I'm going to tape the balloon onto the straw 
and the string is through the straw so that this gives us sort of like a track for our balloon to move, okay? Now, I haven't blown up my balloon the whole way. So, I'm going to, let me adjust my camera here. This is the hardest part, I think, of this whole activity. It's making sure you're on camera at the same time. I'm going to hold my string and my balloon straight out and I'm gonna let go. And as you recall, our equal and opposite reaction and action forces. So the, the stretched balloon is gonna push the air out as soon as I create the opening and the reaction is going to propel our balloon forward, hopefully into that railing. Are you ready? Let's do it. Woo! That went quickly. <laughs> so I have successfully made my balloon rocket. Now, as you can see, it went pretty quickly, um, but I only went a short distance. I would say this distance here is maybe about four-ish feet. So the next step up might be trying to see if we can get it to go further, trying to get it to see if we can go faster so you can time it. And um, one of the challenges that you're probably very quickly going to see is that you're gonna need to retape your balloon every time because as the balloon crinkles back up and equals those pressures and forces back out as it flies, the balloon and the tape sometimes become a hot mess. If that happens, just hopefully you can get a new balloon or use just another piece of tape on top of that part of the balloon um, and keep going using that same balloon. Now, in flu season, maybe we want to make sure that each person uses their own balloon for this activity, just a thought. But another thing you can try is switching out your straw. So if you've made your own paper straw, you can try a wider diameter straw, you can try a thinner diameter straw, you can try different materials for straws, and you can also try different pieces of thread. So that was a thicker piece of string. This is a really thin piece of thread. So I wonder how, does anybody have any predictions for how this might happen on a piece of string as opposed to, or thread as opposed to a piece of string? Does anybody think it would be easier, harder? Anybody have any guesses? Okay, so no guesses. Hopefully you're all still awake. Um, now, like you, I'm gonna repeat this process. Thank you, Becky. Baba Becky says, maybe easier on this piece of string. Maybe, let's see. One of the things that's different is the yarn. It's thicker, it's furrier. Maybe that's gonna add some extra friction perhaps. And maybe the thread, which is thinner, will allow it to flow easier. Now, as you can see, I blew up my balloon a little bigger this time. And this thread is about the same length as the blue yarn that I started with, okay? So, John predicts it's gonna be better, so let's see if John and Becky are right. Are you ready? Here we go. It went so much better, my balloon fell off and over the railing. Okay, so I think we're moving here. We're cooking with gas. <laughs> In this case, what it might also be helpful to do is if you wanna add some friends or family to this, um, you could also have a friend or family member time it. You could do a slow motion camera on your phones. I know a lot of smartphones have a stop motion function. You could have it um, set to do a slow-mo to see how long it takes from beginning to end. So you could time it to see whose rocket is most efficient. And then the last piece, is something to do with the balloon. What else could we try that I haven't done yet? What else could we try, I wonder? Same balloons, but I've been keeping that balloon pretty small. Wonder what happens if we make the balloon bigger. Now, if we make the balloon bigger, there's another thing we might have to contend with. Bear with me here as I get my straw contraption back. Okay, I'll get my track. So Gray says, let's inflate it more. I'm doing my best, Gray. All right, so I inflated it more. And now I have 
this issue. Where do I tape it? Does it matter? Do I tape it in the front? Do I tape it in the back? When the balloon's a lot smaller, it's just easy to kind of tape it onto the middle. How do you think it will affect the balloon and its motion if the straw is in a certain location? Do you think it has any effect? Hmm. If you folks suggesting it's going to go faster. Now, the trick here when you are working with one person. Gray says on the back it might weigh down the balloon more. So, interesting. Let's try that out, Gray. So Gray says if you have it on the back where that action and reaction is happening, perhaps it's going to weigh it down too much. And let's see if we can see what Gray is talking about here, what she's suggesting. So I taped it as close to the bottom of the rocket as possible. I have a lot of balloon space up front. What do you think is going to happen? Let's take a look. Are we ready? It went, but it wasn't as fast. I wonder why. Maybe it was struggling to push with the mass unbalanced. Perhaps. Now, let's try on a longer piece of string. And so this time I have, oh my, a lot more string. And a lot more string that has gotten in a knot because I've been standing on it. So bear with me again here. <laughs> kind of stretching myself out so that you all can see. And we're going to cut the knot here real quick. And we're gonna try again with this balloon. And See if I can leave this guy attached. Probably not. And we're gonna try. We're gonna test out and see what John is saying. And he's saying that if it was on the front, the back would fall. And on the, on the back, the front would fall. So he's saying that maybe, I like what he's saying. It helps to keep it balanced if we're also trying to keep the forces balanced in action and reaction. I think you're onto something. But you know what, let's just test it out. Let's show them what you think, John. And again, working by myself here, very, very efficiently. Thanks for being patient with me as I do this. Not gonna be very easy once the balloon has blown up. Troubleshoot here, probably keep your straw on the string so that you can thread it more easily and not drop your string six times in a row like I have. This is a real comedy of errors. But you can do this as a race with your family. You can keep everybody kind of working against the clock to see how many successful sort of like game of games, see how many successful rocket launches you can do in a short amount of time. All right, so I've got it taped on. I've got it threaded on my string. And we're gonna do what Gray and John, our fun guests today, thank you both for being on here and suggesting things, what they both suggested. Gray said, let's blow it up bigger, see if it goes faster. And John said, be careful if you put it too far forward or too far back, it might flip. So let's see if they are right. Okay, so I've got it sort of on the front. I'm going to move this way back here so that you all can hopefully see it. And the balloon is sort of out of frame right now, but I will try to do like NFL cameraman and keep up with it here. So here we go. Are you ready? Oh man, John was right. So this is helpful for you today as you're doing your rocket launches. One of the things that you'll wanna know is as you blow up your rocket and make it bigger, you're gonna have to make sure you balance the forces because the forces within need to push out the air to keep it balanced but you're also gonna to need to balance the mass. And that's a huge, huge part of a successful rocket launch. You have to make sure the weight in the plane or in the rocket is balanced appropriately so that you can achieve the liftoff that you need. 
So when you're working on your rockets today, remember action, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And that device, that object is going to move until those forces equal out. Why does our balloon stop? Our balloon stops because most of the air got pushed out and our forces balanced. And what makes your rocket stop, in my case, is it either hit the railing and bounced back over, or in the case of this guy, there was too much friction on the string, there was too much imbalance of the mass, and it caused our, our balloon to sort of transfer all of that elastic potential energy into motion energy. But instead of going in a straight line, it sort of went in a roundabout fashion. So think about those kinds of things today as you test out your own rocket. And I would love for everyone to share any rocket launches that they have. If you do a successful rocket launch, take a short video of it and share it with us. You can email it uh, to us at info at need.org or you can send us a DM in Instagram and send us a quick little video clip of your rocket launch and show us your successful rockets. One of the other things that you could try maybe is adding extra balloons. You could try doing longer straws, shorter straws, and you can definitely go longer than I've done here. Um, I hope you had a great time today. I hope you learned a little bit about rockets. For every act, uh, action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, and that's what's making our balloons move and our rockets launch. Thank you all for joining us today. Does anyone have any questions? P. Holland, yes, we are live. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I'll stick around for a few minutes. Otherwise, share us, share with us your videos, share with us your rocket launches, and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend ahead. Thanks, everybody.